Hello, hello, Room 19 families. Welcome to day 16. Just want to get on here and share a few updates with you so far. So we do have an updated menu for meals through the district. You can pick them up at Graydon between 11 and 1 each day. Here I have our important information slide. There will be some updates on this in the coming week as we receive more information from the district about how distance learning will continue. And then we have our day 16 learning plans here. So first students will be reading Bug Me. Um, Bug Me is a collection of insect poems. And the main characteristic of these poems that makes them poems is that they have line breaks. They don't just keep writing until they run out of room. And there are some rhymes. Some of them rhyme um, two lines at a time. Some of them go every other line. You can kind of point that out to them and help them see that. And then whenever they are finished with that, they can get on ABC Mouse or they can get on Raz Kids or read a book of their choice. Don't forget on Raz Kids, it's great because I get to see how they're doing and I can check in with you if I notice maybe they're failing a lot of the quizzes or if they're making some really good growth, I'd like to let you know um, and kind of brag on them a little bit. For writing today, they will be writing poetry. Write a poem about an insect or an animal, and then they'll use the book Bug Me for that inspiration. So if you didn't point out the rhyming and the line breaks to them uh, while you were reading or while they were reading, you can do it now. And they might be like, oh yeah, that's right. We talked about that in class. And you can show them this. This is an anchor chart, um, kind of a one pager here that we actually did create in class. I can print these off and tape them to a, a poster paper. So I did do that, so this should be familiar to them. If you wanna screenshot it at this time, you can, or I will be including it on the student document on Google Classroom. I'm going to put in a slide that has this to kind of let, again, let them work more independently. So strategies poets use to write poems. First, poets give a topic or find a topic that gives them a big feeling. We talked about how sure we love um, pasta, but unless we have a big feeling about it, that might not be the best topic for poetry. Then poets find a small moment, detail, or object that holds the big feeling. So let's say um, I really like pizza, but I don't want to write about a slice of pizza. Maybe I have a moment growing up where my family went to a pizza shop that's really special. So you can pick a moment, a detail, or an object that holds the big feeling. And then poets look with poets' eyes and see this ordinary thing in a new way. We sometimes use our hands to put our poet glasses on and kind of learn to see the thing in a new way. Then lastly, poets write about it experimenting with line breaks. We talked in class about prose writing, P-R-O-S-E. That is where students are writing normally how they write stories where they keep writing until they run out of room, then they move down and keep writing till they run out of room and move down. We talked about how poetry is different because there are line breaks. You don't stop because you run out of room, you stop because it adds rhythm or because that's where the word is going to rhyme on the next line or you want your writing to trail off. So we talked about um, this in the classroom. So this should be a useful tool for you if you'd like to use it moving forward for writing today. And then of course doing a print or a cursive page or two. And then for math, you'll be comparing lengths. You can create a table on in a student's notebook with rows and columns. They will be picking three objects from your house that are less than one foot long. So if you wanna get out a ruler first and remind them about how long a foot is, and then collect those three items, get back to the notebook, have a ruler next to you. But before you measure your objects, they are going to be estimating the length of the objects. So what I say most of the time is I have their student, I have students look at a ruler, I have them put their thumb next to the zero and their index finger next to the one, so it almost looks like they're about to pinch something. I have them carefully move it away not to move their fingers, and then the space between their thumb and index finger is about an inch, and I have, it put it, I have them put it next to the object and kind of move their fingers along to estimate about how many inches it would be. Then... They'll write down the estimation, and then they'll actually measure the object. If you want to go back, I can't remember quite what day it is, um, but there was a Brain Pop Junior video about measuring with inches, so you can go back to that if you would need a review. And then write down the actual measurement. Then students will write down if their estimate was correct, or was it pretty close to the actual measurement, or was it not close at all? 
So that, that lets students reflect about um, and think through if they're thinking of inches the right way. Are they thinking of them as much smaller than they actually are, much bigger, and what we can do to get better at that in the future. Then, of course, there's also the option of completing math page and vision lesson 12.8. And this guides students through estimating and measuring. So here again, they'll use their finger to measure along this path and they'll estimate. And this one does have centimeters, um, which they did talk about yesterday. But if you want them to be practicing more with inches, I would be doing this first activity. Then for fluency practice, they will be doing addition clash. Again, that game from, I think, week one. Um, to increase the challenge of the game, players can draw three cards and make three-digit numbers to add together. And we have practiced that a lot. Um, right before we went on break, we did three-digit addition and subtraction with regrouping. So if you want them to take um, or to have a little more practice with that, that would be great. And then, of course, they can get on Fact Monster with the flashcards and work through. If they've already worked through level one, two, three for addition, you might have them move on to subtraction or keep moving forward with the addition. Whatever works for you works for me. Then for social studies, we have bartering goods and services. People can barter to exchange goods and services. Visit Epic. So this is a resource students have definitely accessed in the classroom, but just for you to know you are not actually going to go for parents um, and you're not going to go for teachers. You're going to go to log in, students and educators, and then the class code, which I did put on the document as well, is CUK3038. And then you click go. And then you can pick your student's name and they can find the book. They can search for the book, um, No Money, No Problem by Lori Haskins. So again, that's how you access that book. And then you're going to think about and answer the following questions. Draw and illustrate your barter or trade experience on plain paper, or you can do it on notebook paper. Either is really fine. Have you ever traded or bartered with someone? I bet a lot of students at first will be like, no. And then you think about it, it's like, well, I guess I did want that one thing from a friend and they wanted something I had. So kind of help them dig through their memories and find a moment. Um, what item did you give and what item did you receive in return? And then if you want even more, you can watch this schoolhouse video. Again, it's safe here, so I won't open it um, to help you better understand bartering. So today's main focus is not on money. Today is on bartering. And that is it for day 16. I hope this has been helpful for you. And if you have any questions, please send them my way. A friendly reminder that if you want to look back at my email from Thursday about Google Classroom, and if you want your child to be a bit more independent, um, you can get that set up for them, or you can continue using this. This is totally fine as well. So again, I um, hope this was helpful. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.